Welcome to CBS Sports senior writer Matt Norlander here in studio and CBS Sports bracketologist Jerry Palm. Gonzaga gets a massive road win at St. Mary's. Matt, what does this mean for the Zags? Uh, it, it means that Gonzaga looks like it has uh, come back from the quasi dead and, and on track here to make yet another NCAA tournament. It's gone to 24 in a row. It's trying to make it for 25. And I will be interested to hear what Jerry says because Jerry and I agree on when it comes to using the term lock. I'm intrigued over the idea of Gonzaga's actually a lock yet because it could theoretically play like a Portland and a WCC semi. And if it lost in that, that would be a pretty detrimental uh, loss. But overall, my biggest takeaway with all this is that Gonzaga had gone many, many years since the last time it played a non-conference opponent of real significance in February. And for the Kentucky game to fall on the road this season and for Gonzaga to get that one, that has become the big win non-con to kind of get them on the right track here as we, uh, as we curl right here into the first week of March. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge win for Gonzaga at St. Mary's. I've been saying all along, I don't think they could make the NCAA tournament without beating St. Mary's at some point. If they have a win over Kentucky and they're 0-3 against St. Mary's, uh, I don't really care whether San Francisco's quad one or two. They're not a tournament team or close to it. But it's they were not going to make the NCAA tournament. Now they've got the win over St. Mary's. I feel a lot better about their chances. I'm not going to call them a lock. I, I really don't throw that word around hardly at all. Um, but uh, I think that Gonzaga is in a lot more comfortable spot tonight uh, than they were when they woke up this morning. You know they have to put 68 teams into the bracket, right, Matt? Uh, they got to put 68. They, they got to be one of the 68. Well, well, they are right now. Owen five to start the season in quad one games. And, and look, I get it, the San Francisco, but they've won three quad one games to end the regular season. Yeah, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, th listen, that was a very, very impressive, high-quality quad one road win. They're going to – I've been saying, as Paul knows, because we've done many HQ hits about this, they're going to get into the tournament. They're going to get there. I mean, if you told me they won the auto bid, I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever. This was this was big. I think when everything settles, they're in. Yeah, they're, they're in. They've made 24 straight NCAA tournaments. They will make a 25th. Speaking of the number 25, Michigan State has made 25 consecutive NCAA tournaments. But that streak is in jeopardy. Didn't expect them to beat Purdue on this night. Uh, they gave, you know, Purdue a good run, but you know, that doesn't really matter in the results column. Uh, the Spartans, though, have now lost three in a row, Jerry. What do you think of Michigan State's resume? Well, it's not great. Um, they're definitely a bubble team at this point. Uh, but they don't have the fatal flaws that some of the other teams they're competing with have. I mean, they played a good schedule. Uh, they're not like below 500 against the top three quadrants. They're not great against quadrant one, but, and they're not great away from home, but they, they aren't really in a better, or a, I'm sorry, they're not really in a worse place now than they were before they lost to Purdue. I mean, everybody's lost to Purdue this year. So, you know, that's not really the thing that's hurting Michigan State. It's the home losses to Iowa and Ohio State. They could have done something tonight to mitigate that. They still have more chances. Uh, they've got another week of the regular season. Northwestern's a tournament team. They're going to get them at home. Conference tournament. I'm, I'm not worried about Michigan State just yet. Yeah, I tell you, it's, it's the losses in aggregate that just make me kind of curious about what we're getting from Michigan State here over the next like week and a half. They also have the home loss to James Madison, which is a ding, even though JMU uh, rates as one of the better mid-majors this season. Still, it's a home loss to JMU. And now, having lost three in a row, it's at 12 losses. And at, certain, at a certain point, like, you know, the resume is, is fine enough for a bubble team. But, and they don't have any Q3 or Q4 losses. They are 8 and 12 against the top two quadrants. So don't go messing around and get beat by Northwestern in your next, in your next game at home, which is your final home game of the season. So I would just, I would keep an eye on it. I still think Michigan State's going to get in the tournament. I do. But uh, from a team perspective, I just, I, I find them to be less than inspiring as of late. And I thought, I thought that we, not that they would win against Purdue. I didn't think that would be the case. But I didn't think that we would find MSU in a spot here after it won three in a row earlier in February, where it would have turned around to drop three straight. Last time Michigan State missed the NCAA tournament, you got to go back to 1987. They've got two games to go in the regular season, home against Northwestern, then on the road at Indiana. All right, time now for your winners and losers from Saturday. Matt, we'll start with your biggest winner is who? 
You know, I'm going to go with another 12 loss team, but you know what? Not all loss totals are created equal and Villanova being able to do what it did. And Kyle Neptune has had, I mean, this team, this resume is fascinating people, but you were able in a double bubble kind of situation to go get a big win. Keep your case still out there. Nova has more work to do. It has a difficult remaining schedule to close out the regular season and very well is probably going to have to enter into the Big East tournament needing to win at least a game to get into the field. But in a tough spot on the road, Nova got it done early tip. Didn't want to overlook it. Nova, my biggest winner of the day. Yeah, and for me, it's Gonzaga. I mean, Gonzaga entered today in really a must-win situation to try and preserve this long NCAA tournament streak of theirs in a hostile environment against a team that already beat them at home. They went out and beat St. Mary's at their place. It's just an enormous win for Gonzaga. Uh, it doesn't guarantee they're going to make the NCAA tournament, but boy, they're in a lot better position now than they were uh, before that game. All right, now for a team that didn't help their resume, Matt, who disappointed on this day? You know, I really thought, I really, really thought that Wake Forest would go on the road and take care of business against Virginia Tech. It didn't happen. So now Wake Forest has dropped back-to-back -back games on the road against Notre Dame. Not a good team this season, although it's coming on strong in the past uh, week or so. And then against Virginia Tech, uh, Wake Forest is 1-6 in quad one. It's, it's still got, you know, runway to turn things around. And... What's interesting about this team is, is you know, predictive metrics, which is not what's going to determine whether or not they get into the field. But predictive metrics have rated Wake Forest as a top 30 team for much of the season. Um, but you know what? you got to stack the wins and, and getting two opportunities on the road, failing to get it done. To me, it was a, uh, a major lost opportunity. So among the losers, I would put Wake Forest near the top. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Wake Forest uh, not being able to get it done on the road and the predictive metrics liking them. Gonzaga is actually kind of in the same boat. Didn't have a resume that was good enough, but the predictive metrics really love them. My loser of the day is Providence. I mean, Providence gets Villanova at home, a team that they're competing with for a spot in the NCAA tournament and just flat lay an egg. Give Villanova credit. That's a huge win for them. But for Providence, I mean, if you're serious about making the NCAA tournament, this is a must-win situation. You have to defend your home floor against your peers and just did not get close to doing that today. And now Providence is in a world of hurt, may actually have to win the Big East tournament to get in. Matt's biggest winner was Villanova. Jerry's biggest loser, Providence. How about that? Looking ahead to Sunday, projected number one seed UConn hosting Seton Hall on CBS. Pirates are among Jerry's last four in. The reigning national champion Huskies, meantime, looking to avenge their loss to Seton Hall from earlier in the season. Noon Eastern on CBS. Matt, there's not a whole lot to choose from on Sunday. There's a lot of college basketball, but in terms of top matchups to watch, what do you have your eye on? You know, I'm... I, I think that we're heading toward an NCAA tournament that's going to have a lot of really good storylines. And, and one of the themes we're going to see is the likes of a Washington State, which doesn't get there that often, a South Carolina, which doesn't get there that often, another team from a high major that is pacing to do that but needs to not trip itself up is Nebraska. So Rutgers goes, is going to try and walk into Pinnacle Bank Arena, and you don't just walk in the Pinnacle Bank Arena, okay? You don't. It's going to try, but Nebraska, don't make this harder on yourself than it needs to be. I believe the Cornhuskers are a 10, according to Palm in his most recent bracket update there. Just take care of business at home. Rutgers is nothing close to a tournament team this season, so on a weird Sunday, I'm just almost like watching this game and covering my eyes because I would love, mm -hmm. as someone who covers the sport, Jerry, I lo I'm loving how we are we are pacing. And maybe Wake Forest will be one of these kind of teams as well. Hasn't made it that often, but uh, we'll see if Nebraska can get it done. That's my game I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah, I mean, for, and for Nebraska, if you're going to be a home court hero, you actually have to win the home games uh, as opposed to, say, New Mexico. Uh, for me, the game of the day is uh, Seton Hall and UConn. It is a tremendous opportunity for Seton Hall to really make a statement to the NCAA tournament committee, it's asking a lot. Winning at UConn is asking a lot. But it's it's a golden ticket opportunity for Seton Hall to try and, and push their way up the bracket into the NCAA tournament. If you can win at UConn, you are, you are making a statement to this committee. Yeah, they have won uh, 19 straight at home.
<laughs> it's pretty darn good. It's a Between huge ask. Hartford and yeah. Gamble and Stores, yeah. uh, they are unbeatable at home in their last 19 games and looking to avenge that loss to Seton Hall from earlier in the season. A game you can see on America's Most Watched Network, CBS, and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. Two weeks away from Selection Sunday, Jerry Palm, Matt Norlander here on CBS Sports HQ. Men, thank you. And for more from Matt Norlander, join him and Gary Parrish on the Iron College Basketball Podcast, breaking down all the big storylines. There are more of us than there are of them. That's right. I'm excited for the next edition. Huge, listen, huge Sunday night recap episode coming your way. Me and GP, plenty to break down, a lot. And guess what? Two weeks until brackets, folks. You kidding me? We're going to be ready to go. Cue the music. There we go, baby. We're headed to break. It's March. I have trademarks to play this. We're going to play it anyway. Oh, snap! Gonzaga goes on the road and hands St. Mary's its first loss in 16 games. Full highlights next on CBS Sports HQ.